Have you ever wanted to create your own art toys? To bring your imagination into the real world? Well, I've spent the last couple of weeks trying this myself. And in this video, I'll walk you through my entire journey. From preparing the model in Blender, to 3D printing, washing, refining, and even my first attempts at painting. This process was full of learning, and yes, plenty of mistakes, but each misstep was a lesson. And I'm excited to share these insights with you, so that hopefully you can learn something new and be inspired to create something of your own. Before we begin today, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Elegoo for providing me with the Saturn 4 printer as my old printer gave up on me, so without their support, this video wouldn't be possible. With that out of the way, sit back, relax, and join me on this adventure as we create my first 3D printed art toy. The first step is preparation. Our goal here is to get the model ready for 3D printing, because right now I have two problems. One, I still have a bunch of modifiers still active on my objects, so I'll need to go through and apply all of these until I'm left with my high poly sculpt. Problem number two is that I have lots of separate objects overlapping, and although it's not always necessary these days, it's good practice to go through and fix this. In this case, I'm going to be using Blender's Boolean modifier to union all of these objects together until I have one solid piece. The goal here is to try and remove any gaps and overlaps that could potentially ruin the print. And if you're having performance issues working with dense objects, the decimate modifier is pretty good at reducing the poly count while maintaining the overall detail. Details. But you'll need to be a little bit patient with this because this modifier can be a little bit slow. And also remember once you apply a modifier there's no going back. So I often keep multiple backup files at different stages just in case. Although this is probably a little too much. Once I have the unified model it's time to export. For 3D printed we want to export our model as an STL file. This is the standard format for 3D printing. And if you're concerned about the messed up topology on your model, fortunately topology does doesn't matter for 3D printing. But depending on how detailed your sculpt is, this export could take a while. So in the meantime, go and pop the kettle on, grab yourself a nice cup of tea, hit like on this video, and hope that Blender doesn't crash. Alright, it didn't crash, which must mean you liked the video, right? <laughs> With the STL file ready, we now need to move on to slicing. Slicing is where the magic happens, and today I'm going to be using Chidubox Basic, and we'll be using this to convert the 3D model into a series of layers that can be read by a printer. During this step, I also set up supports, which are crucial for ensuring the model prints correctly. For the most part, I typically use the automatic support feature for this, and my settings are configured configured for the Elegoo Saturn 4 printer and the resin I'm printing with. You might also notice that I've laid my character flat for printing here and that's because the Saturn 4 is a resin printer which prints entire layers at the same time so the shorter the model is the less layers will need to print and then the print time will be faster overall. Finally I transfer the sliced file onto a USB stick and this little device will carry our model to the Saturn 4 printer where the actual printing will now take place. 3D printers come in many variations, with the most common two being FDM, which works by melting long spools of plastic and gradually building the model, and resin printers which work by solidifying layers of liquid resin using UV lights. Today I'll be using the Elegoo Saturn 4, which is a resin printer. Resin printers tend to be better at small prints and little details, so the Saturn 4 is going to be ideal for my use case. I'll be making a full review of this printer when I've had a little more time with it, but I can already firmly say this is the best printer I have ever used, with my favourite feature being the auto-leveling print plate, which is usually a tedious process of manual adjustment. In the case of the Saturn 4, I simply mount the plate and the printer will do the rest. As for the resin I'm using, I'm currently using both Anycubics and Elegoo's water washable kind. As a beginner, I found the water washable versions of resin to be much easier to get started with, as you don't need to worry about any harsh chemicals for cleaning. But now it's time for the first test print. So I pour in my resin, select my print on the 3D printer, and now we just need to come back in a couple of hours to see how this turns out. Wow. 
watching the print rise out of the liquid is so cool. And it looks like the print was a success, but I want to give this a good look over to ensure all of the details printed well. So I give this a quick wash in some water and remove the supports to take a closer look. I couldn't see any noticeable issues with the print, which meant I could safely now go bigger. In fact, I want this piece to be at least 9 inches tall. The problem with this is that a 9 inch print would be huge and likely not fit in the print inbounds. So to work around this, artists typically cut their model up into multiple pieces to make the most of the available printing space. So it was back in the blender to further prepare the model. In this case, I once again use Blender's Boolean modifier to cut the model into individual pieces. The idea here is to try and cut the model in areas that are well hidden and not very noticeable when pieced back together. Together. And for some extra integrity, I also added some additional blocks to the pieces and boogled the relevant holes into the parts where they connect to. This should ensure the model is nice and sturdy when pieced back together. Now it's simply a case of spacing these out nice and evenly so that when I export as an STL and import into Chitterbox, I can increase the size and make the most of the available space. I've made this as big as it can go in Chitterbox and I'm not quite sure how tall this is going to be, but there's only one way to find out. Let the full size print begin. It looks like we've had a little failure here. The head looks great and the boots look awesome, but I can't say the same for the body or the legs. I'm not quite sure why this happened, but I think there might have been too much spacing below the body and the legs didn't seem to attach to the print plate properly. So I've repositioned these in Blender, exported and sliced the model again to hopefully rectify this. Time for round two. Oh yeah, this looks awesome. Time to remove the supports and give it a little bit of a clean. At the moment, I'm just using a bucket of water with a spare toothbrush to give it a bit of a scrub, keeping in mind that although this is water washable resin, it's still toxic and should not be washed on the sink. These pieces are now clean and dry, but I still find they tend to have a little bit of a sticky feel. So to finish these up, I like to throw them into a curing station for a couple of minutes, and this will make sure that there is no chance of any residue left on the piece. Shout out to Elegoo for also providing me with the mercury wash and cure station combo. After a couple of minutes in the curing station, these pieces now feel completely dry to the touch, and piecing them together has worked out perfectly. With that, the 3D printing process is complete. This piece is already looking awesome. It stands on its own, looks great, and I could stop here. But there are some things I want to fix, such as little indentations from where the supports were, any noticeable layer lines from printing, and it also looks like there was some damage at some point too. And if I'm honest, I wasn't entirely sure what would be the best way to fix these, but a couple of YouTube videos later, and I'm feeling ready to give this a go. So I picked up a set of sanding sponges at various grits, along with some epoxy putty that I hear is great for filling holes and imperfections. Now it's simply time to put on some headphones and get to work. I think that should just about do it, and this stage was much easier than I thought it was going to be. I started with a 320 grit to sand down the larger bumps, and then polished it off with a fine 2500 grit for a smooth finish. Throughout this process, I also sprayed the pieces with water to reduce the amount of dust this gave off, and these sanded sponges were very comfortable to work with. But that brings us to the end of the sanding phase, now it was time to move on to the final step. Now for the most intimidating part of the process. I have some experience 3D printing, but I am yet to try my hand at painting. But a little bit of colour would really help to make this guy pop. 
so it was back to YouTube to learn some beginner methods for painting 3D prints. After a couple of videos and some tests painting on my smaller test prints, I decided airbrushing would likely be the best way to go and would provide me with the clean finish I'm looking for. For the paint, I'm just using some basic acrylics I found on Amazon and Google tells me I can thin these down with a little bit of water to run them through the airbrush. This probably isn't the best way to do this, but for a beginner like myself, this was a simple and straightforward approach. But now I've got a lot of painting to do, so let's get to it. This coat is complete and now it's time to add some colour. I want to add some scarlet red to the hoodie and the shoes. But before I start airbrushing, I need to mask off some areas that I'd like to keep white. To do this, I use a combination of masking tape for larger areas and I picked up some Vallejo liquid mask to cover smaller details. This stuff is really cool and works by simply painting it onto areas you want to mask and then it dries to a rubber-like consistency that can simply be peeled off. I spent a short while covering all of the white areas of the shoes and used masking tape to cover up the hands before giving them a nice coat of red paint. The hoodie came out looking pretty good, but the Vallejo liquid mask didn't go how I expected, as I ended up with quite the messy paint job after removing the mask. I had to clean this up by hand, which was pretty difficult on smaller parts. I think next time, I'll likely simplify the design, or perhaps split these up into even more parts when printing. But these experiences are all part of the learning process. But now we're super close to the end my friends, stick with me and let's get back to work. This has been quite the challenging journey, and although it's not perfect, for my first attempt I'm really happy with how this has turned out, and I'm already excited to take what I've learned from this experience to make my next piece even better. But to finish up today, I gave these pieces a little coat of gloss, which should provide a nice protective layer for the paint and ensure this piece stands the test of time. Now it's simply time to glue this little guy together for the final reveal. But that's all for me today my friends, I hope you enjoyed the reveal. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next one.